Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. Another episode of Banish the Doubt. Today, I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about fighting, and how we should never ever stop fighting. Now, when I say fighting, I don't mean in the physical sense, where it's clenched fists and fighting another person. Okay. What I mean is fighting our mind. And when I say our mind, I'm talking about the mind that has been trained. Excuse me, that's the washing machine going over that corner in my like, was it, uh, my left eye here. Um, fighting our mind. Fighting the external. You see, my friends, what I have found in this journey of mine is that what you and I see every single moment of our life is nothing more, nothing more than an echo, a shadow, if you will, of our thoughts, feelings, assumptions, keyword assumptions and beliefs of our past. I want you to think of you walking down a street and it's nice and sunny out and you have a shadow that shadow is what we see that follows us if you will the shadow is nothing more than the out picturing of all these innermost thoughts of ours that have been cultivated since we even before we were born I want you in your mind's eye to picture, draw a circle in your mind's eye. Now, I want you to draw going across the middle of the circle a line. And I want you to focus or think about erasing the top portion to where it only have dashes left. Okay, so the circle will have, it'll be solid, uh, solid underneath going across the top. The top, going across the middle, excuse me, the top are dashes. I want you to think of the top with the dashes with a C as in conscious, conscious mind. I want you to think of the bottom portion as S, subconscious. Now I want you to think of all the thoughts and images from childhood. Relationships with your parents, your brothers and sisters if you had any, schoolmates, teachers, religious institutions, the leaders, in quotes, of these religious institutions, the leaders, if you will, of school, if you were bullied, <clears throat> I want you to think of any coaches. If you were sports co competition, I want you to think of your parents' relationship with each with within themselves. Okay, I want to bring up a story that sort of helps to illustrate this in some respect. So a few weeks ago, I was in our bathroom here. And I could hear the screaming coming from outside. This screaming, which was, where are you? And obviously my mind, you know, my eyes started darting around and I looked out the window because I followed my eyes where this screaming was coming from. And I found it to be at my neighbor's house and the father screaming, the husband. And then a female voice, like the wife, so my first thoughts were something happened with the wife and maybe she's out somewhere she shouldn't have been. But the father, the husband's voice was just at, the, at a pitch. Only to find out that he was, his, his ire was directed at their son. Mom was involved in this altercation. Now, when I'm saying this, some of you that may have recalled, you may be recalling some of these similar types of situations in your upbringing where 
you had an overbearing or a father figure or a father that you feared. Okay, so why am I saying this? It's because, and, I, and by the way, I want all those thoughts you're having, okay, any thoughts you're, that this is sort of conjuring up, to be put in the bottom portion of this circle, subconscious. Now, when I say the conscious is dots on top, and I'm, kind of, I'm going to come back to this altercation with my neighbors in a second. I'm going to sort of tie it in here. The dots, or the dashes, excuse me, represent the conscious mind not officially or formed yet. Okay? Because from third trimester, our brains turn on, like a light bulb turning on, okay? <clears throat> so the dashes aren't even there yet. It's just the subconscious. So relationship mom and dad, relationship with each other, the fam family relationship, mom, dad, uh, grandma, grandpa, aunts, uncles, what have you. This is what you and I observed from our thinking in the womb. But more importantly, our maternal, our mother's reaction to this. So, tying it into the screaming next door. If this scream, and I'm sure it wasn't isolated to this one night, right? This is the type of relationship that the mom and dad had with each other before they got married. During this third trimester where mom was carrying the boy whose father's, the ire was going at, was directed at. This subconscious programming and its programming was being programmed into this young fetus. Mom's reaction to this environment influencing the fetus. Now, I want you to start to create the dashes. From birth through age seven, this is the subconscious and the dashes. The conscious is starting to form. It is why, my friends, we can recall our childhood around child, I mean, excuse me, around age three, four, right? I was about three or four, our stories go, right? I was about five or six, our stories go. Conscious mind developing becoming conscious of our surroundings, our relationships with mom, dad, fam family, now introducing school, introducing church, okay? Now, tying it into fighting this fight. So, this is the baggage that we carry with us into our life. Society is just a tsunami of images. Young ladies, you have to look like this girl in order to be what? Accepted. Young men, you have to be what? The captain of the football team or the baseball star or whatever in order to be accepted. I'm, just, I'm generalizing, but you kind of, you understand what I'm going with this. So our lives are external. Everything external to us, right, defines us. But that's not, not even close to the truth. It is what is inside. It is who we are in, it, who we are on the inside. It is us as this spiritual beings having this human existence or, or human, um, this life, this human life. We're, there is no such thing as time, ladies and gentlemen, my friends. Time is an illusion. So when I'm saying to fight this fight, what I'm talking about is fighting it the inside. It is identifying maybe for some of us, what that childhood dream was, right? The, I want to be the astronaut, the singer, the sports star, the whatever it may be, 
an artist, an author, whatever it may be, that was suppressed as a child. But it's in it's inside of us. If your family, you grew up in a family where there was a lot of strife and a lot of anger, a lot of stress around money, and you find yourself in the same type of situation where there's a lack of money, understand this. When you look at your bank account, and if you see lack, that's exactly what you're perpetrating. Um, that's exactly what you are manifesting in your out outside, um, your exterior, ex external, your life. You're drawing more of it to you. It's why the person who has a problem with substance abuse and anybody who could tell that they have this abuse, they, they have this issue, and they say, but you keep drinking or you keep taking the drugs, you keep focusing on the lack and you keep getting more of it. This is the fight to turn this around, to see in your inside, to see what it is you want to do, be, or have in your life, and to fight against all of the um, armies that are out there that tell you that, no, competition, you have to be better than the other person. <clears throat> so the great fight is to hold to this image that you maybe own your own house and you've been living in an apartment. You started your own business and nobody in your house, your, your upbringing, nobody has ever gotten really out of, outside much more than that much more than a minimum wage type of a career or, or a job. Becoming self-employed, an entrepreneur, and society tells you, you know, um, majority of companies that, or businesses that start, they, they don't make past two or three years. Getting that idea in your head and saying, no, I'm going to stick to this. I'm going to see myself as a su successful entrepreneur, a singer, a, 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 a published author, whatever it may be. We want to learn to circumvent this, okay? We want to become conscious of what it is we want. So going back to the circle now, the top part is solid, just as the bottom is. But what we're doing now is we're going to take our conscious thoughts and we're going to start to move these thoughts into that subconscious. I would like you to think of a glass, okay? Like I have this glass here with this ice in it. I would like you to think of this glass, half of this glass here, okay, almost where the ice is here, is our subconscious, and here's the conscious. And I want you to think of this here from where the ice is as being, oh, I don't know, let's call it um, Coca-Cola. Okay, dark, very, very dark. And I want you to start thinking about putting clear water in it. A little at a time. These are the thoughts. When you wake up in the morning, I want you to start to wake up with this vision of your future. I want you to start to think of yourself as embodying. You are that person. You have that successful business. You're waking up in, and I don't care if it's a, you know, a studio apartment. You're waking up in your own house. You are seeing in your mind's eye as you're laying in your bed before you get out. You see the master bedroom or whatever it may be. Okay, you're walking down the hallway, down the steps to your kitchen, open concept kitchen. What do the steps look like? What does this bedroom look like? What does the bathroom look like? It's in your bedroom. Okay? Start to think of this. Your bank account. I want you to start to think of the amount of money that will be in that bank account after all the bills are paid, the rent, and or maybe if you have a house, the mortgage. Okay? I want you to start to think of the relationship that you're in if you're single. 
I want you to start to think of the person that's in your life, maybe laying in bed next to you when you wake up. I want you to start to think of the healthier relationship, the vibrant, healthy relationship they're in if you are like my neighbor in a toxic environment, in a relationship. I want you to start to look in the mirror and tell that person, this is who I am. You deserve this. You're worthy of this. You see, my friends, because it's in these moments, and if you're listening to this right now, watching me, and it's starting to churn up some, some emotions inside of you, positive emotions, emotions of, yes, I can. Yes, this is who I am. This is truly who I am. Because that's if you feel these emotions, it's because it's who you are inside. You're tapping into that person. That's why you feel this, because this is who you have always been there. Okay? So I want you to be gentle with yourself. Okay? Put a couple thoughts in there from time to time. Okay? I would, want you to, I would like you to start to live a life where you are no longer focused on or concerned about external anybody else, anybody else's approval of who it is you want, what it is you want to do, who you want to become. I want you to start to think that way. Because this is, how, this is what happens. We start thinking this way. And for a lot of us, we think this way now. And then 10 minutes from now, we, we leave this video and something happens and we go right back again. But it's in those moments when we start to, if you start to catch yourself, when you start catching yourself, that's when you're starting to make inroads. I want you to start to become mindful of being detached. When I say detached, I mean detached from anything external. When, a, some, when somebody who has said things to you and triggered you and set you off, I want you to start to become mindful of detaching yourself from those reactions. Understanding that they are just they are just a mirror reflecting back to you what's inside of you, okay? And detach yourself from that. Don't hurt yourself. Don't, I mean, don't blame yourself. Just, okay, that's kind of who I still am. Still, that's still inside of me here, okay? So I'm detaching from the outcome. Putting this thought out there and detaching from a time, a time stamp. Oh, it'll happen in five years, ten years. No, just... It is happening. I see myself as that. Detaching from, and don't tell anybody about what it is you're planning on doing, because these are the people who have the same type of mindset you have right now. So their mindset is, right, if this is where you're coming from, well, that's the people, they have the exact same mindset, right, that you had leading up to this. So clearly their reaction is going to be of that of a person who thinks that way. We don't tell anybody anything. Okay. The next thing I want you to do is start to, when you go to sleep, close your eyes. And I want you to start to revise and think about the day and things that you did or said or acted or reacted and change them. Change them to saying the things that you will now, that this person says, this person with this type of a mindset says. Reacting responding versus reacting. The person today responds and doesn't react, okay? I want to give you a, a, an example. So earlier today, something happened when I was working and I caught myself and I said, ah, George, the old you would have acted this way and the feelings that were coming up, I said, uh-huh, that's the old you still coming up. It's still there, but... The fact that I realize this is a huge step in that direction of changing. See, because the universe will test us. The universe, my friends, is not a vending machine. It's not an ATM machine. We don't put our wish in there, push a button, suddenly everything comes out. Okay, so it will test us. But this is how we start. This is how we, f this is the fight I'm talking about. Fighting. Never stop fighting. Never stop understanding this is who I am. This is who I want to be. The bank account, the relationship, the job. Um, see yourself, if it's a job, see yourself being congratulated for a promotion. The action we put forward is not an action of grinding or anything or a competition. 
the competition, if there is ever, it's with us. It's with up here. It's not external. Not anything or anybody external. It's all here. It's who we are inside. It's the old us, okay? The subconscious, all those um, conditional behaviors and beliefs and thoughts and feelings inside the subconscious, that is the shadow. We start to understand this, okay? We don't do anything for accolades. There was a quote I heard from Wayne Dyer. I forget who said it. And it, was, it went something along the lines of, I detach myself from the good opinion of others. Not opinions, negative, obviously, but the good opinion of opinions of others. Our opinion of ourself supersedes all others. <clears throat> Understand this. Whenever we find ourselves reacting to somebody else's opinion of us, what we're saying in that moment is your opinion of me is more important than my opinion of me. Always remember that. These thoughts we have, ladies and gentlemen, my friends, do not return void. These thoughts are either going to be like Neville says, invested or spent. It's time we stop spending our thoughts and start investing these thoughts. Thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen, my friends. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. If you haven't done so yet, and it's your first time watching this video, please hit the subscribe button, notification bell. You can go back into my library, see all my videos. If any of you watching this would like to have a one-on-one -on -one session, leave a comment down below. I will be in touch with you. Okay, I'm going to start putting together some counseling, some coaching, not counseling, coaching sessions, okay? Just one-on-one, -on -one, anything that I can help you with, I'd be absolutely thrilled to do so. Thank you so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. Share these videos because the more and more people hear and watch these videos, the healthier this world will become. Until I see you again, thank you so much, and I'll see you on the other side.